Welcome to the Week in Italian Startup, where we discuss the latest highlights happening in the Italian tech and investment ecosystem. The past couple of weeks, we've seen a few very interesting elements coming up. Uh, so let's start maybe from uh, probably like the biggest news in terms of a uh, headline, I would say, is uh, the one about Nucleo, uh, willing to raise about 1 billion. Uh, let's start from there because the uh, of course the entrepreneur is a very well known entrepreneur he's been like around in the uh, in the tech space for uh, for a long time and uh, it's really like um, trying to disrupt the nuclear energy sector in a very very important way so i thought that was extremely significant especially because he's really putting you know all one dot after the other and every time it comes up it really has something massive uh, in under his belt so that's a uh, that's very great a uh, great example so so it, not like a, an early stage startup but more like a massive scale up uh, uh, going big but uh, definitely it's worth mentioning what's your take no, on that? i agree with you no, i agree with you they're moving fast uh, i think what the, the, the idea was that it would take years to to get to a working uh, power station with that technology but they're you know, moving really fast. Uh, I think last week, a couple of weeks ago, they signed a, a partnership with uh, ANI, ANL, uh, one of the two, I believe, mm-hmm. uh, whereas the, 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 the corporate will support them in, uh, in creating their first power station. And now this announcement, one billion, to, to, they're, they're going to use it to build nuclear, station, nuclear um, power, power plants uh, with their technology. Yeah. Uh, that, that's surprisingly yeah. fast. I mean, for, for my expectations. And what my feel on that is that uh, uh, it's really the startup of the nuclear uh, powers, because uh, if you think about the product for the listener, uh, basically they're developing small modular reactor, SMRs. Essentially, it's a basically a huge implementation in the nuclear power plants, because uh, instead of having massive uh, capex to do like huge plants, Essentially, this is a modular and it's very versatile. So essentially, you can uh, people can really build up to the power, to the need in a very, very precise way. So it's kind of, you know, taking a massive and complex problem, breaking it down, making it available and, uh, you know, with a huge potential to scale. So it's definitely like a startup mindset, like working at full speed in a, in a very old and important problem. So that's, uh, that's what I found particularly impressive. Yeah, yeah, in the meantime, I checked it was Enel they signed the partnership with. Enel, okay, cool. Awesome, awesome. Yep. Yeah, looking forward to see what uh, what will happen for the next news being like, hey, we built a bunch of those, everything is working, time to, to go even bigger. So yeah, no, definitely a good job for the guys. <laughs> yeah, uh, in terms of the Heavy ecosystem... Space, another... uh, it will happen soon. Exactly, exactly. So super excited, super excited. Um, another great uh, uh, innovation in the ecosystem, this, this one more on a, on a sort of, um, I would say, relationship between investor and uh, startup founders is the launch, the official launch of the Italian Safe. Uh, so after years of kind of going around uh, different like tools where, you know, early stage investor can invest in startups. Uh, finally, in Italy, we have something which uh, took like a precise shape. Uh, so SAFE uh, for the listener is essentially like an instrument that the in- early investor used to invest in startup was created by Y Combinator. Uh, and uh, it's basically essentially like giving the investor like a quick tool to um, uh, buy into the equity of a startup without necessary valuation. So that's, uh, that's roughly the, the idea. Um, I definitely encourage people to look into that because it's, it's a great tool that has been used and used really well in different occasions. Uh, yeah, in Italy, we didn't have anything like that, really. We had some sort of like some convertible knot style uh, kind of deals, but nothing like the, the YC safe. So definitely interesting, great job for the guys at, uh, you know, Italian Tech Alliance, Growth Capital, and uh, I think uh, Club degli Investitori also had a part in it. Uh, I don't know if I'm missing someone, but definitely a great tool to, to keep an eye on. Yeah, there were a couple of uh, legal studios probably involved, but I agree with you. I mean, um, we had ways uh, to uh, mimic the, the behavior of the safe, yeah. 
but uh, every time it was, you know, uh, every time you, you had to use the tool, you would, you know, reinvent the wheel. Uh, in this case, there is a framework, there are all the, uh, all the you know, right bits in the right place and you're ready to go nice. with a standard document. And that's very helpful. Nice. All right, going on regarding the fundraise from uh, last week, HT Material Science, Irish Italian startup raising 15 million from Saudi Aramco, Berkeley, CDPVC, and Progress Tech Transfer. So in the past weeks, uh, there's been a lot of deals in the tech transfer space. And uh, I don't know if there is a pattern here, but definitely like uh, what has been pointed out is that it, you know there is something there moving. Uh, and this is one of the biggest, I would say. Um, so, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the HT um, material science company, essentially, they're providing different kinds of fluid that have essentially a very different way to react to um, thermal situation and the application are really wide. And of course, uh, I'm not technical. Uh, I don't know much about the industry, but seeing the kind of application is really one of those products that uh, you don't expect, but it's pretty much everywhere. So definitely, definitely a great, uh, an interesting and very technical deal. No, as, as always, this is outside of my uh, knowledge area. So I don't know much about the technology, but you're right. There are a few, quite a few deals that are happening, uh, not in, strictly speaking, in software, but in materials, in new technologies, um, life sciences, biotech. Uh, and I, I'm not surprised since we, Italy has a strong history of uh, research uh, in those areas rather than in software. Um, so it's you know, good that we see this trend continuing and this uh, legacy uh, coming from the from the 80s, from the 90s, kind of going, going forward and going strong. Um, and, and I believe this is, a, as far as I understand it, this is a technology that's very helpful, exactly in applications related to uh, renewables, uh, energy transportation, stuff like that. So that's very yeah. um, contemporary. Totally, uh, totally. In, and uh, in terms of um, what they're doing. Among the portfolio of clients of the of this company is really like people manufacturing chillers, heat pumps, energy recovery systems, terminal units, uh, even you know uh, cooling off of data center, which is a non-obvious kind of uh, kind of uh, you know um, expanding business. But uh, definitely, it's uh, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of application. Yeah, I was reading somewhere. Uh, I need to find the article uh, and I'll send it to you uh, about the amount of power consumed by data center. It's a mind blowing number in terms of you know overall consumption in uh, in single nations. So even even by lowering by five percent the the cost of uh, of powering and and servicing the uh, a data center. Mm -hmm. it, it has a huge impact on the national energy consumption of the given state. Interesting. So, yeah, yeah, no, it, it surprised me. And it's not slowing down. That's the thing. It's no, not slowing down. No, so, thanks so to AI, it is issue. not. Yeah, thanks to AI, totally. it is not. Totally. Awesome. All right, Cosmico, talent tech startup raising 1.85 million from Prana Venture, Bonsai Venture, and Growth Engine, and the syndicate of Business Angel. So uh, the value proposition is Cosmico is really to match make uh, digital talents with the uh, corporation and companies in general. So they take care of essentially of the onboarding process of the um, uh, digital freelancer. They interview them and then they allocate project to big corp. So it's, it's a new way to match making um, uh, resources with projects and tasks. Uh, it's going, it, it, it has been going for a while. Uh, they managed to raise uh, like a, a nice amount that actually can definitely like bring them forward. And uh, what I thought it was interesting is that um, a lot of uh, angel holding companies are participating to this round, which is a phenomenon that we are seeing also kind of moving in Italy. So more and more holding like, well, not not like ton, but uh, we can definitely tell that a few holding companies like uh, have been created anew to participate into startups. So Bonsai is one of those. Uh, I was checking their website. They're, they did like a few millions of, uh, of fundraise in different like early stage projects. Um, very, very precise. Uh, another one um, that was mentioned is a growth engine, which uh, is, uh, is related essentially with, uh, with Growth Capital, a uh, Milan-based advisory company. And this is pretty much their vehicle where they pull together investment from Angel. 
So it's, um, I mean, and we've seen, apart from those two, we've seen like a few holding, like moving forward. So that's, uh, that's powerful. Because again, that's kind of uh, um, leaving, uh, well, letting the early stage investment asset class more open to like private investor and early investor. Mm. Yeah, I agree with you. This is, uh, this is a good signal since the investor base that the seed precede and serious early civilization age uh phase is, is broadening and that's that's important and that also says something about how capital is moving now um my counterpoint is that we are still lacking series a b and c series mm -hmm. series a b and c investors mm -hmm. uh and i expect a bottleneck coming up mm -hmm. uh some, sometime down the road if we we don't grow more later stage investors, we call, call them later stage, not series B investors. Interesting. Uh, since, since international markets uh, have, uh, in a sense, uh, have, have, um, are less uh, present in Italy, international investors are a bit more afraid right now of moving around. Uh, I, I'm, I hope that uh, this year and next year we will not see kind of a roadblock going forward to, to, yeah. to, to, for these companies that are raising the Series A, Series C, the Series C, the Series A's right now. Yeah, um, yeah to I don't know, honest, I don't know. CDP, CDP is point. filling the gap. CDP Correct. is filling the gap. Exactly. That's what's exactly. The problem is that it, it shouldn't be the only player, probably. So CDP mm. is massive. Uh, it's definitely filling the gap. Uh, definitely the teams are very capable and uh, they're really spending all over the startup ecosystem. But I don't think they should be the only one. And what I'm, f I'm fearful is that given the total slowdown globally, people are very feared, you know, SBV and, uh, and co and everything that is happening that we'll probably going to see a slowing down and a little bit of a bottleneck, unfortunately, because I, I, we don't see so far signals of even like huge funds uh, investing in Italy in series A or B. Well, we have occasions. There are like some occasion, but it's not as uh, the velocity is not quick enough, probably. So I agree with you. The, the early stage is working and it's working well and it's working hard. Uh, but what's going to happen afterward? Good, great mm. point. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll see. Yeah. And, and paradoxically, the funds, the later stage, later -ish stage funds that are starting in Italy are looking at Europe at large. Mm -hmm. uh, see, P P1 or uh, as, mm -hmm. as a fine European view, United Nations historically as a fine European view. And then they are right, so they have to take the European view. Uh, there are still quite a few of them, and uh, we're, you know, we're broadening their interest area. Uh, of yeah. course, there will be more competition uh, domestically yeah. here yeah. in Italy for those funds. <laughs> we'll see. Um, Talking, going back to the tech transfer, uh, 360 is really doubling down their effort in launching uh, Poly 362, which is essentially like a, a tech transfer fund. Uh, they managed to raise uh, four years ago about 60 million to support essentially um, startup coming out from the university ecosystem of uh, uh, Politecnico di Milano. So that's, uh, that's powerful. Again, uh, I mean, we're, we are pushing that. We probably are even good at that, I believe. I mean, yeah, we are. <laughs> as, as uh, you know, the connection between tech and universities is, is growing and uh, maybe, maybe that's, that's one different way on how the, the ecosystem is going to grow. Well, I believe they set an example, a very interesting example, and other universities should, should in a sense, try to, 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 to follow up on what the Polytechnic of Milan is doing. Um, and that's another example of uh, a fund investing in a broad space of technologies, not just software, uh, since the Polytechnic is strong also in other verticals, materials, for example, uh, and the, the quantum that is something going, for, going yeah. on there. Um, so this is an interesting approach for an early stage seed investor uh, having a very broad scope for, with a very narrow uh, source of the inflow. Even though they, uh, they didn't limit themselves to the Polytechnic of Milan, yeah. which most of the inflow comes from there, most of the investments came, uh, went to, to um, teams coming out of the university. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, on the same note, let's talk about uh, uh, Scientifica Venture Capital, which is uh, also a very interesting uh, play when it comes to early stage and connection with universities. Because so essentially, um, Scientifica is uh, is basically uh, already invested in a lot of different like uh, uh, tech startups. They launched the the Quantum program, so really focusing a part of their effort into the, the quantum space. And what is interesting, which uh, I, I didn't notice before, is a program that they have. And by the way, they have a lot of programs. So people willing to, you know, tr- maybe students that are interesting in, interested in, uh, in looking into the venture industry. I mean, these guys are really trying to bridge the gap. They have this adventure program, which feels like a, a, like a student scouting program, which is an interesting take on that. So essentially, they're uh, recruiting students to, you know, to train and to teach them sort of the, the basic v- uh, elements of VC and then help them uh, do scouting. That's the idea. That's very nice. Yes, they're doing interesting things. And among them is Quantum, uh, Quantum uh, Italia uh, uh, initiative. Um, partnering up with a very interesting initiative that's Unitary Fund. Maybe the Unitary Fund is even more interesting than uh, Quantum Italia. Uh, mm-hmm. A sort of non-profit helping creating a quantum technology ecosystem that benefits the most people. So they're basically okay. uh, kind of a think tank, an ecosystem enabler. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. a very, a Discord a very nice channel. Initiative. They have a Discord channel. Yes, on, yes, think. exactly. Yeah, so people so, listening is called Unitary Fund. And uh, people that are listening and are interested in the quantum space, definitely take a look because apparently they're like, a, I mean, I'm not, not no expert, but this seems like there are like big names in the space. So it can be a good uh, hub for, for this kind of uh, top thematics. Ab- absolutely. Go there awesome. and study what they're doing uh, with the people that are collaborating with, collaborating with. So they're a very interesting initiative. Uh, interesting. And I like the, the, this team up with Scientific in order to sustain and look for quantum technologies in the so. Awesome. Great move. Great move, yeah. Let's talk about another move. Uh, Cube Labs uh, going public in the Euronext uh, uh, in Milan. So that's, uh, that's pretty interesting. We've been talking uh, in, uh, in a few episodes about how um, companies are getting to IPO, even if the size of the company is not uh, um, immense. Uh, but there are the sort of the, the, the assumption in the right price of position. It's a, it's a kind of a deal that can like go through like pretty nicely. So uh, Cube Labs is essentially a, a venture builder focusing on healthcare in particular. It was funded by uh, basically an entrepreneur who has a massive experience in the health, healthcare space. And uh, they've been investing in tech, which was particularly focused on and narrow on, on, on the vertical. And now they are uh, public. So they, they went IPO, they did all the process, um, of course, in the, in the professional segment. And, uh, and yeah, that's, uh, so Euronext now is at 196 uh, tech uh, entities that are listed. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, we don't see that every, every time. So I thought it was, uh, well, I mean, Nick, you were, uh, you were right on in spotting it and uh, pointing it out because it's, uh, it's been an interesting deal. Yeah, um, they raised 4 million at the IPO, I read from the article, uh, yeah. for a market cap of the IPO of 34.1 million. Uh, the professional segment is pretty not liquid. Uh, yeah. So they, they, they will stay there, and this, this is most most listings on the professional segment of the uh, unit growth are basically more similar to private placement, private rounds than to Good point. Uh, real yeah. IPOs. These are very liquid; they are, the stock doesn't move, and yeah. subscribers yeah. are usually professionals, not you know retailers, and they tend to have a lot of lockups. So. Yeah. Uh, it's a very interesting instrument because, in a sense, it gives you a, a, a sense of being public without all the mm-hmm. uh, uh, do's and don'ts of being public. And I yeah. think they, they made an interesting move. Uh, we said it pans out. Um, yeah, my only question. Will work. 
I mean, I like yeah. it because, again, it's toward the democratization of venture investing in some way or another. So that it's a great sign. And I would, I mean, you know my, my position on, on certain crowdfunding campaigns. So I, I kind of feel that at least there is some protection there because professionals are, are kind of ma managed to, you know, go through some hoops to actually go public and, you know, make it in access to the public. Uh, the only problem is that, well, not a problem, but the doubt is that how democratic that is, like uh, how far down actually that is accessible to, uh, you know, retail, I mean, not retail, but like we need a highly sophisticated investor and, uh, you know, how many are, are there willing to bet on, on the Euronext? I don't know the volumes. I've been tracking a little bit the volume of Cube, but it's definitely early. I mean, it, they've been on the market for like a week or so. Basically, they record six transactions, which of course, but it's it's part of the the, the kind of market, so it's nothing nothing crazy. Uh, but yeah, I was thinking about how exactly you know um, semi professional, semi sophisticated can actually benefit and and buy into these kind of stocks. I don't know. So anything that we are saying here is not investment advice. <laughs> uh, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, these We're are just experts. personal opinions. Uh, probably, it's if you are wondering whether you should invest there, you probably don't want to invest there because it's very liquid. Yeah. Uh, you, you can, you know, that's that's basically a startup. The model yeah. is, you know, not uh, a public utility, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and if you manage to get your hands on a hundred shares of the company, you might be able to sell them, you know, in a year. Not Correct. tomorrow. So uh, you, you 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 make very, you ask very good questions, uh, but probably the, the the fact that the segment is called professional segment says something about whether retail should touch anything listed there. No, for That's sure. Probably, it's probably no. But, yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a good guess. Still, that's that's not guess. That's not investment advice. Uh, awesome. All right, Nick, just uh, as a conclusive note, uh, I was checking the, the graph that you always include in the, um, in the newsletter. Uh, so it's first quarter kind of ending. Uh, we must admit that we are back at 2020 levels and the trend is like tracking with 2020. So after a couple of years of craziness, 2021 and 22, where actually there was like a, a massive, uh, some massive deals and some massive liquidity. Now the market is cooling off. Um, we'll see what the, what is going to happen. I mean, uh, we are back there. Uh, we're very hopeful because uh, because of course we we need to be, and uh, you know there are always new things coming. We didn't we didn't see yet the chat GPT sort of wave of startup like building in Italy as you know as the massive one that is like touching the US. So we're I think we should expect that at some point. I don't know when, but. Uh, this year, I mean, I'm sure this year is going to happen. I mean, yeah, but, I uh, hope so. We can't, be, we can't exactly. be more than a year late on that. I mean, that, that would be crazy. Yeah, that would be a shame. That would be like super. <laughs> yeah, shame. no, come on. Come on. <laughs> come on, people. Uh, Listen, people listening, please come out with MVPs with GPT-4 and uh, send us the stuff because we need this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, even though even though I'm you know I'm excited by uh, GPT four and how you know the, the brothers and brothers that will will, will come up, um, I'm kind of I, I'm kind of I don't know about anybody mm -hmm. who's building some kind of core products on an external mm -hmm. API providing basically the product. So I mean. We'll see. We'll see. It's it's very mm -hmm. early. It is very early, but with the latest advancements from from OpenAI, the plugins. I mean, oh yeah. Should, should oh, we talk man. about plugins? Oh man, no, no, because it's gonna take like a day. I mean, Zapier, Zapier integrated with GPT-4. That's like boom. Yeah. Um, no, it's massive. It's massive. So what? what rather than thinking about uh, which startup to 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 build uh, this is more like how many startups are, are going to be killed by this combination so great point that's great that's, point that's that's we are in a Schopenhauer, Schopenhauer moments in a startup land in software and it's, and it's interesting interesting i think awesome 
We'll see. On that note, on Schopenhauer, uh, okay, that calls me to make a full episode on that. Uh, the Schopenhauer implication of GPT, I would love to, well, Nick, you, I know you too, you would love to do that. So we'll definitely build something around that. And uh, for the moment, yeah, thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you next week. Ciao, Jack. Have a great week. Ciao, everybody. Take care.